Dear manufacturers, please, please, please give product descriptions. One of the hardest things that's going to happen in this video is that I have very little to go on in terms of product descriptions. The reason for that is because Windlass didn't feel it was very necessary to give a lot of detail. Oddly enough, what this results in is when you look at different resellers, they each have a slightly different description of the sword. That's not a good thing. And ultimately, I kind of would agree if you were to say this sword speaks for itself, but at the same time, you're making my life a lot harder, and you're making the lives of the resellers a lot harder, and you're making the lives of the consumers a lot harder. So please take note, give a good description with your product before you take it to market. Now, on to the Brandenburg Rapier. The Rapier was the Renaissance swordsmith's response to demand for a light civilian weapon that could be used in tight alleys, urban streets, and duels. Though commonly associated with nobles, the Rapier was used by men of all classes. It is a blade design given almost wholly to thrusting attacks, ideal for tight spaces. Long and slender, the blade in conjunction with good thrusting techniques has plenty of reach to keep the foe at bay. The thrusting attack, while creating wounds not as outwardly impressive as slashing weapons, were usually the more dangerous and fatal of the two. Even a wound of a few inches was difficult to treat, and critical organs lie not far beneath the skin. These qualities further emphasize the swordsman's need for timing and skillful strikes, for little strength was needed to make a killing thrust to an unarmored enemy with a rapier. Thus, its contemporary swordsmanship schools emphasized these qualities. Rapier fighting, however, was not just timing and distance control, for its manuals show ample evidence of more brutish grappling, kicking, and hilt strikes. This Brandenburg rapier is equal parts form and function, possessing a dashing look and a strong blade fit for any noble swordsman. This rapier is modeled after those that were common in the 17th century, featuring the telltale swept and twisted metal basket that is designed to catch the eye and keep the hands safe. Like all rapiers, this sword features a long, narrow blade that is designed for thrusting and stabbing, although this blade is made from hand-forged high-carbon steel and reinforced with a flattened oval cross-section to give it strength and durability. Like many rapiers, the blade also has an extended ricasso that extends through the sword's basket hilt, although on this rapier, that section of the unsharpened blade is decoratively engraved. Lion and floral etchings adorn the thickened ricasso. The basket hilt wraps around the sword's grip, featuring twisted metal spokes and quillins that are as functional as they are visually appealing. The sword's carved horn grip echoes the same twisted design while featuring a hand-wrapped steel accent wire, which altogether ensures that the sword offers a strong, reliable grip that is perfect for fencing and dueling. Included with the sword is a black scabbard with steel accents on the throat and chape. A gentleman must never go anywhere without his blade of choice, and if you're going for an authentic and historical look, this Brandenburg Rapier is the way to go. Here are the specifications for the Brandenburg Rapier. The important thing to note is that the blade length is shorter than the gold standard for rapier design. If there's one thing this rapier is going to do, it's going to catch your eye. The twisted metal that's used in all of the swept hilt is really, really eye-catching. It shines and shimmers almost like a diamond in a lot of ways. And that kind of twisted metal approach is taken all the way through this entire sword. Uh, the handle, the bone handle, is twisted at, uh, at a consistent angle, and the, the pommel has twists in it. And so the hilt component as a whole has this really uh, interesting, twisted, strange kind of look to it. Um, but it's really eye-catching, it's really beautiful. Uh, but I would say that it's only so at a distance. As you get up close, you begin to see some of the flaws where these things are welded and connected and all of that. Um, but at a distance, it looks really nice. And that's really what you want having a sword like this on your side. Historically speaking, it would be 
to look nice, especially the hilt component. You want it to stand out. You want it to say, I'm of a noble birth or I'm from a well-off family. Look at the beauty of my sword. Much a, a fashion accessory at the time as it is uh, a weapon. Um, again, with the aesthetics kind of going down the blade, uh, at the Ricasso, which is hidden behind the swept hilt portion, uh, you have a nice little kind of inlay uh, kind of a faux inlay, really, and it, it has a, a flowery, leafy, and even has a little lion motif on it. Um, and it, I, I think it looks really nice. It's very subtle. It's something you have to actually explicitly look for and look at. Otherwise, it just kind of blends in. And I actually like that about it. Now, the bone on the handle is, is really nice, a very nice, uh, even quality. And with uh, the wire wrapping that follows the twist, it just adds something uh, visually nice to it. Um, the blade itself is, is, of course, well made, like you would generally expect from a windless product these days. Uh, it does have a central ridge down the length, there is no fuller. Um, but overall, the blade suits its purpose, it, it's, it's there, and it looks nice, and it, as a whole, is part of the sword. Uh, it looks like a good sword. As we begin to talk about functionality for this rapier, it's going to get a little bit dicey because there are a lot of good, but there's also some bad. Um, generally speaking, the blade is fine. It's made from the proper steel, it's properly tempered, it's flexible, it's strong, and it holds an edge very well. More importantly, it holds a good point. Um, I will say, though, that the overall construction of the sword isn't exactly what I would normally want. Uh, specifically, the pommel is actually a screw-on pommel, and I'm pretty sure it's been glued knowing how Hanwei uh, makes their, their swords, um, but I would imagine a good couple twists and it would come off. Um, but that's okay. Overall, it is a sturdy construction. Uh, one aspect of functionality that I'm not very fond of is actually the blade length. Uh, I feel it's a few inches shorter than really, really where it should be, and that actually makes uh, makes this kind of at a disadvantage. If you're going up against a really, really nice rapier that would have kind of the proper length blade, so it is a little bit shorter than I would expect. Uh, one of the things I actually do like in terms of a functionality standpoint with this sword is actually right here, um, where you can put your finger over the ricasso uh, and and actually hold it more. Uh, at a handshake grip really comfortably, get a little bit more point control, um, and still have your fingers protected. Now, that's actually a feature on a lot of rapiers, but not all of them, and so I figured I would point that one out. Uh, overall, um, I'm not a huge expert with rapiers. Uh, I'm definitely much more of a medieval and longsword type guy, um, but I do believe that this suits a, a lot of the basic purposes from a functionality standpoint. Again, there are some aspects that I don't think are great, but overall it is functional and it would serve its purpose. Ultimately, this sword at its price point is exactly what I wanted in a rapier. Um, it's functional, but more importantly for my purposes, it has some good visual appeal. Uh, now my purpose here is actually to use this as kind of an accessory for a Renaissance Festival costume, uh, where it dressed up in very lordly style clothes and I wanted to have a good nice rapier at my side and I wanted it to be somewhat eye-catching and I think this this sword the Brandenburg rapier uh, really fits that bill um, because of the twisted metal hilt again it's very eye-catching and the overall aesthetic is very nice but it still has the functionality like I want in every sword that I buy I want that functionality um, but I will say, like most windless products, um, I'm happy with the purchase. I'm never disappointed by the purchase. However, uh, they never really seem to go above and beyond with the, with the quality of their products. I never feel like I'm getting more than my money's worth. I'm just getting my money's worth. Uh, and of course, their quality never really dips below that, so I never feel like I'm getting ripped off. Uh, Overall, I do think this sword fits my purposes very nicely. It looks good, it is functional, and it's, it's nice, it's comfortable as a rapier. Um, so I'm happy with it, I think it's a good sword, um, but I wouldn't rate it too highly. So here it is, the Brandenburg Rapier by Windless Steelcrafts. I give it a three out of five.